Hey guys, it's Derek. Welcome to the Writer's Block. Today we're continuing with the Writing of Planet Dolan series by discussing what the voice actors do with the scripts once they receive them. Joining me are Danger Dolan and Hellbent. Okay, once the script is dis is distributed to you, I'm not sure who distributes the scripts or anything or how that goes. Um, I don't know, maybe Dolan can shed some light on that, but once you receive a script, what's the first thing you do? Like, do you do a read through? Do you maybe change some wording to make sure it's in, within your vernacular or? First thing I do is look at what's in my script file and I read the titles and the one that sounds the most interesting, I do it first regardless of the due date. And then I move forward and start reading. And if I see something that I don't like, I just make a mental note of it. It's like, I don't like how that's written or maybe like that sentence is a bit long or it's a little breathy on the H's. Little things that don't really matter all that much that any actor could actually just get through just fine. But I have a tendency to do enough retakes that if I see, or for example, we went over this before, mm -hmm. uh, that there, that there, that there, you know what I mean? It can yeah. either be one T, two T's or a brief pause and all that to where you could, you know, alter it a bit. But I usually don't do too much editorial until I'm actually in there. I kind of like just to hit the ground running. And if I run into severe trouble, we just annihilate that bridge when we come to it. Yeah, I'd say that uh, because sometimes I'm the one distributing the scripts, especially if I'm voicing them, I have even more of a preference where I can look at the entirety of the scripts and be like, I only like these two, so I'm going to voice these two. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I'll just start by uh, by going through it. And generally, the only thing that stops me on voicing anything are just words that I've never heard of before. Uh, and if there's no translation there, like a comment bubble from the writer, then I'll look it up myself, or if I'm unsure, then I'll look it up. I, I do it less these days. I kind of just wing it. Uh, but when I was doing countdowns ages ago, uh, I would always like double check the, the weird location names and stuff. Uh, but yeah, now these days I just I just voice it, and uh, I know generally how to make these things flurry after doing hundreds of them. Uh, but I, I definitely have less enthusiasm in my voice because. Uh, I've been I'm doing it for so long, mm, so right. unless it's for literally a role that requires dramatization, which they don't, then, uh, you know, this is this is how I voice, exactly how I'm talking right now. <laughs> I would compare it to manual labor after like five or so years of it. It's it They'll throw you for a loop once in a while, you might even run across some stuff, you're like, oh, that's really cool. But at the end of the day, a script is a script, we've done hundreds of them, and, you know, what are you going to do? It's the same thing all the way through. There's no amount of preparation I could do to make myself more prepared for a script. I mean, reading the whole thing from top to bottom is nice, but I find that I do just as well if I just start reading right off the bat. I have to do a little bit of warm-up. The intros always catch me up. Well, that's probably my own fault. I know I do all those in one breath instead of, like, taking a pause between the sentence. Like, no, there's an intro. We got to pop it get in there fast they like you know what do you got how how much time before somebody clicks off a video dolan isn't like five seconds like you got five seconds or ten seconds to like snatch somebody in before they're out uh generally but um i i found that if people rely on your channel as producing good stuff they'll give you more time whereas if if someone new that has no idea who you are then yeah generally Within a few seconds, they'll be like, I don't like you, or I like you. Man, it's just like Dayton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, I think for us, because we're, we're vets of this now, we've been doing this for many years, um, we can just, you know, we, we, we just voice it without even thinking twice, really. But you don't realize until, like, let's say you were working at a factory and you were a five-year veteran, and then and then some kid comes in and he's like, oh, you know, I'm doing this by a book. Uh, did, you know, shouldn't you be doing this and this and this and you're just like hey, listen kid <laughs> listen tight yeah. uh you know, let the grown-ups think here and, and uh that's that's how, that's how i think about it until i think in this uh metaphor the kids would be like youtube comments being like hey you didn't say this properly and and again you're like listen kid <laughs> <laughs> listen a little shit <laughs> Listen, kid, this is a German name from the 1800s. There is no record of somebody even speaking it. It's only yeah. written. Mm -hmm. Nobody when knows you, how to say it. 
when you first get started, you, you see a comment like that, you're like, oh man, I, I, I messed up. What? This is horrible. I need to improve next time. And now these days, you're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Let me see your homework so I can spell check it. Let me spell yeah. check it. Yep. Yeah. And another thing that you and I once talked about, Hellbent, it just came to me. It was, there was actually, a, it was an actual line in a script that I wrote. It was something like, Doopy mouthed the words to her mother or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And mouth it, the words, mouth the, 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 yeah, the roll of the tongue, yeah. the mouth the, the, the words. So your tongue has to go from your teeth to your palate and back to your teeth and up. I mean, uh, mouth of the, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a grammatically correct sentence, but does a blog in a script? Probably not. Like if it was in a book, it'd be fine. Depends on the actor. I've I've heard people that can just like knock that stuff out every single time. Maybe I'm a little bit loose in the job. That sounds awful. Anyways, um, <laughs> there there are a couple different ways to speak. You can over enunciate mm -hmm. everything and sound like this and hit every single enunciation perfect, but then you sound like an asshole. So it doesn't you know, sound natural. You know, mouth the word, mouth the, the the words. You know, to where it just mm, doesn't sound like. It doesn't sound like somebody speaking to you who's a human being. It sounds like somebody's just reading a story to you, which, I mean, we are, but we make attempts, or at <laughs> least I do, to sound like I'm your friend sitting next to you or somebody like on a voice chat or like, I don't know, somebody who gives a shit, just trying to let you know about facts or just to tell you a story that maybe you'll find interesting something, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit of emotion, a little bit of realism, I guess. Like you would actually say, I mouthed the words to Dolan. Well, you could, you know what, it isn't perfectly pronounced, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mouth the words to Dolan. Like, yeah. that D is almost like a silent one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's shit like that that really just pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not, it's not anybody's fault. It is grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. It's proper writing. It could be me as an actor. However, I also know that even if you do pronounce it correctly or just take the easier route, there are foreign listeners, people with English as a second language, folks with poor audio equipment, maybe listening on a cell phone at 25% volume and lowest brightness possible to save that extra battery. I try to think of the fact that it's internet production. It's not like TV, right? We're not everybody's watching on a set top box that with a basic set of sound, like, you know, basic quality. People got $5 earbuds now. Those, those yeah. didn't really exist during television. If you bought a TV, it usually had like some kind of sound to it. Usually these days, it could be on a cell phone. It could be on a Chromebook. It could be on God knows what a Roku stick and the audio, the speakers, the headphones could be God knows what. So I try to voice things with the knowledge that um, I remember talking to my friends on my little Xbox 360 headset. Worst thing imaginable. They actually connect the mic with hot glue. It's like, it's real what? cheap. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wow. works, hey, but mm. yeah, they sound like crap. And uh, I remember having to speak to people, but also wanting to have fun and emoting and all that. And all I can think of is like, man, if somebody's listening to YouTube on an Xbox 360 headset, I want to be the one guy they can understand. <laughs> but then again, that, that results in massive retakes as well. And well, quality and quantity are a hard thing to measure. If you don't, some people are like, oh, yeah, it's always about quality. You have to always achieve for the most perfect, pristine, 100% quality. Well, first of all, no way it is 100%. And if you leave them waiting for two, three months, they're going to forget you exist. The internet needs quantity to some degree. You can't just ignore it. So sometimes you just got to get it done. I, and that means something may not sound right. I recently started doing voice cameos. And it's like, I only have like one or two lines to do usually, but I'm like, I'm doing it. And it's like, I can't really imagine what you, know, you, like you guys feel, how you guys feel when you're doing an entire script. It's like, oh my God, you know, I can't, it's not a big deal, but I don't know, maybe I'm outside my comfort zone because I'm more of a writer or not, or I'm not a voice actor. I'm just trying my best. I find that it's, uh, if you overthink it, right? You got mm -hmm. one line, especially one or two lines, the cameo lines. You're definitely going to overthink it because that's literally the only job you have. You just have to say the sentence correctly mm -hmm. once and then you're done. But, and if that's your only job, then you're like, well, I didn't do it right. You know, if you have, let's say someone came to you and they're like, we want you to voice 10,000 words within an hour, right? <laughs> you ain't going to give a shit. You're going to start right <laughs> away and be like, oh, God, I'm not going to have dinner tonight. And then you'll voice the whole thing, no problem. 
but you give them one line and you just like look voice it perfectly right they're not gonna do it <laughs> they're gonna spend an hour on it pronounce every fucking syllable you know <laughs> yeah well yeah. that goes back to quality and quantity Mm -hmm. If I have a <clears throat> 5,000 word script or a 10,000 word script, God forbid, I know that I'm going to be saying a lot of fluff. It's not necessarily fluff. It's like, you know, context or point A to point B kind of, you know, writing. But it's enough that I don't have to be an actor the entire way through. I can, I can like tone it down a little bit and just speak into the microphone and don't make too big of a deal out of it. And it also goes into how I choose my scripts. Uh, you know, I don't do much preparation because if I look at a script, I'm like, oh, it's a 10 count. And I see like some real big, big paragraphs. That's immediately, it's not, a, it doesn't demotivate me, but it, it does make it hard for me to go, all right, I've got five of these done. I'm halfway through. Somehow I kind of like keeping the lie in my head that I'm halfway done, even though being on number five does not mean that you're halfway done <laughs> especially depending on how they're ordered well whenever i curated a, a reddit story script i uh, i tried my hardest to avoid like the super long stories it's like no way because yeah, i just think it'd be boring even if the story is simply is truly interesting i mean it just i don't know at the same time it's like, okay, let's move on to the next story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, there, there are times that I've cut entire sentences because I'm like, this is just repeating what you said earlier. So I'm not going to say that. Screw you. And then we <laughs> just move forward. Or let's say something's just word salad, right? Uh, I can't bring up a good example, but, you know, she went to the refrigerator to get a soda pop. And when she opened the soda pop to take a drink of her Dr. Pepper that she loved to drink because it's her favorite drink, the Dr. Pepper it is. You know, oh, at that yeah. point, I'm like, okay, we're... <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure we did that story, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. Probably. <laughs> it, it, that may actually be like PTSD from having to do something like that and trying to actually do it. Because opening cancel pop is traumatic. Yeah, yeah it can be. <laughs> Especially when, when it reminds you of a horribly inappropriate story that I can't imagine giving to an animator. Right. <laughs> it's Reddit, right? Like, what are you, you going to do? Sometimes it, it's something something slips through every time i read something though i always try to keep it in mind that somebody has to draw this so if i let's say it's a goofy story it's a bit erotic if i read it deadpan serious it goes from like goofy fun erotic story to like oh god what <laughs> is, are, is, are they gonna be okay <laughs> like no. it turns into a, a, a goddamn horror story like what the fuck am i reading here yeah <laughs> So, you know, there, there's little there's little bits and pieces that may editorialize, but it's all in the it's all in good taste. And I also have good faith that most stories probably aren't true, hopefully, because some of them I really don't want to be true. But God knows those are the true ones. Those are the ones that really happened. Yeah, I would say like about 70, 75 percent, I believe, are true. And maybe that's being generous. That's being generous. But... Yeah, <laughs> I told you it's generous, but mm. I find that things uh, like the stories usually have a nugget of truth. They're usually based on something that's true. But they probably started writing it and were like, wow, this really isn't all that interesting. Let me add a bunch of garbage that never happened or I wish would have happened or something like that. I'm sure it more interesting. I swear yeah. I've read at least one that was just an anime synopsis or something that they just <laughs> inserted their name into. And we'll never know. We'll never find it. It's some obscure thing. And they're just like, yeah, hey, they did it. <laughs> I may have mentioned this last time, but um, whenever I curated those Reddit stories, I always, I mean, it wasn't that I was looking for awesome stories. I always thought, okay, well, this is a, these are going to be video, this is going to be made into a video. So since it's a visual medium, I, are, what, I'm sure the uh, illustrators are going to come up with some great visuals for it. But at the same time, the story, in my opinion, had to be at least be mediocre. Yeah. Um, I, don't, yeah. I don't think I've read any story that was like, oh my God, this is the most boring thing ever. And even if it was, that's just an opportunity for me to be a snarky bastard. So, <laughs> you right. know. Yeah, actually, Hellbent, there was one story that, uh, it was recent, where you said that your, your house or whatever was like super hot and that you like asked people to forgive you for whatever. And then you read one of the stories really quickly, and I couldn't tell why, whether or not you hated the story or because it was so hot you just wanted to get through it or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember, remember that one. That? You know what, yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, I think it was a combo. I think it's like, oh, that's a quick one. <laughs> like, I think I, that was going to be like, I, I, I was going to take a break, I'm really sure. 
it's like all right one more off the list and that means i'm like halfway done you know what i mean even though i'm not <laughs> so i was like okay and then i you know turn everything off flip on the ac i'm like oh yeah oh yeah because uh yeah. your mic will pick up the sound of the v the, the uh, ac i forgot about that i can probably filter it out and i know it's all going to youtube anyway so it's all digital it's all compressed but something i don't know i've done it, you get used to your ways even if they may be a bit detrimental or not necessary uh there's something about maintaining some form of audio purity that i find nice but then again i dolan bought me this microphone and i invested in other audio equipment what's the point of having like an expensive audio rig if you're not gonna like take it seriously right yeah my old computer used to make horrible noises and so a lot of my recordings over the years have sounded really bad so i filtered out the noise and so they just sounded really tinny and bad it's only in the last year my computer just died and i took all the hard drives out and put it into a new computer and uh this computer is really quiet so i've got my aircon on at the moment but it's really not that noticeable uh and i can filter that out no problem so that's been nice but yeah i, I understand it's it's a pain i don't think me turning the ac off is even necessary i'm really sure i could filter it out like everybody else but from i want to sound better than everybody else art is ego driven Mm -hmm. And I've said it on Twitter, everything I've done that's good is a testament to my ego. Like, it's a monument. The best things that I've ever done on the Planet Dolan channel are all monuments to my egotism. And that's a good thing, believe it or not. It's fine. It's a healthy outlet for ego. Makes you proud, right? So even if that weren't a problem, I would probably still just turn the AC off just on principle. I'd just be like, no, I'm an actor. I don't know why. I feel why, compulsed. Well, I know what you mean. Like the first time I ever published something, it was just a little piece of flash fiction, but I was on cloud nine. So I know what you mean. It's like, oh, I felt so important. <laughs> You know, so great. I was on cloud nine, but I'm, I'm also, <laughs> I'm very aware that it's a very extremely lucky position to be paid to do anything online. Right. So from day one, even up to this point, what's been on the fourth out of my mind outside of quality, it's like always in the back of my mind, it's like, hey, you can't really be replaced as a person, but somebody else can do your job. So you never want to like be complacent with things that just being poor quality, at least mm -hmm. not myself. Although I don't think it would really matter, I still think it counts. And even if it didn't matter for Dolan or you or anybody else, there's probably at least one person who's like, hey, I appreciate that. And that's usually enough to spend a little extra time on. I mean, otherwise it would just be for me only, I suppose. And that just feels kind of dark. <laughs> like <laughs> masturbatory maybe, I don't know. Wow, there's an image. Yeah, it's a, that's one of my favorite words. <laughs> like if you ever want to like, if you ever want to critique somebody's art, just call it masturbatory. They won't like it. Oh, some people might like it. I know a few people that are way into that. Well, maybe if I wrote erotica, if you I mean, think about that. I'd still, I'd still act it. I, I don't know <laughs> under what brand you'd wish to publish it or names or whatever, but sure, why not? Yeah, Helbin, if we started giving you scripts for just literal Planet Doll and porn, would you start voicing those? Hell yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> It's, it's just I don't a even need a bonus. Serious. But you always want to know your options. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. No, I'll spare you. <laughs> I'll spare you. I'll spare you. No nightmares tonight. You can sleep comfortably. Yay, thank you. I mean, it's probably I'll a smart thing to do. You can, you can voice your own video that's just called Plan um, Hellbent uh, Erotica and, and then monetize that. And well, no, Dolan, you can't monetize Erotica, but you know what we could do? is Helbent unloads a bunch of hay bells with his best friend who has like severe bone degradation. And that's why he moans a lot. Well, couldn't, couldn't you just do ASMR? Isn't that basically uh, well, yeah, softcore? We, we just gotta do the soft, we just, we can do the hardcore. We just gotta call it something besides pornography, like lifting weights with uh, my friend with Tourette syndrome, <laughs> who constantly says that <laughs> word. Jeez. So I'm like, ugh, 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 and they're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not porn. If you if you hear pornography there, then you're just awful. You don't understand my art. That's true. It's the, the people who have filthy minds, not you. Helbin has an asthma attack while stirring a big pot of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> That's foul. <laughs> now think about the sound, though. Yes, I can hear it right now. <laughs> uh, full, just, you're just full of um, disturbing images today, aren't you? <laughs> Every day. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, I read Reddit stories, though. I mean, uh, the nightmares kind of come with it. It's part of the detail, right? 
I know some of those stories, it's like, they've given almost given me nightmares. I, I've read a few that I'm like, I'm sure, I'm very sure this person has a fur affinity account, and this is literally just bait for me to read one of their stories. And I hope I'm not the voice actor they wanted. I hope they wanted Doopy or Melissa or something, and they got my deep ass voice. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Oh, well, speaking of Reddit stories, I kind of want to ask you, Dolan, um, back when they first started, you had the voice actor for number one tell their own story that related to the sub the uh, subreddit or the topic, whatever it was. Um, was there a specific reason why they stopped? Uh, just because I think the voice actors started running out of stories or uh, they would start repeating them or, or that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And I, I told them, uh, if you want to tell your own stories, you can always just spin it off into a story time for us. And then, I mean, you just saw that recently with Hellbent voicing the story um, about working at the, the game so store. The game store. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. So that's pretty much it. But the problem, I think, is, again, it's a mental one, right? So uh, when, you, when you get to the story number one, you've read out nine stories, and so you want to tell your own story. It's quite easy. You just, you've probably been thinking in the back of your mind about a story yourself, and so then you just say it. Whereas with the story time, I found that what happens is people sit down, they're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a story in front of the microphone with absolutely no warm-up, and then they, they sit there in front of the microphone, they're like, I don't know what I'm doing, and they just give up. Uh, and that that's it's just a psychological thing because as I said when you're reading out nine stories it's quite easy to just do the tenth one as your own but when you're sitting down to voice a thing our entire video yourself it's it's a bit much so mm, that's right. that's the reason why we haven't had stories from like Melissa and uh, and Doobie and, 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 all, and all the others because uh, I think that's the reason. Hell, my first one was uh, rejected and rightly so. I think it was, a, it wasn't that it was too dark. It was just not formed well. Like I can come up with certain stories from work and all that, but the whole game store one's real relatable because it's a base level entry job. You can be working at a different store and still relate to that. All that stuff's like, deeply embedded in corporate everybody doing an entry-level retail john knows about it even if it's not a game store and it's more relatable than let's say if i did bar security stories <laughs> like it could be fun but the chances are of it being like vulgar or excessively violent for the standards that are on youtube of course because we got to keep that in mind well, i'm sure i don't know it just seems unusable well also, i was just gonna say it may also eventually seem kind of repetitive oh yeah if all my stories are work stories yeah i mean like it, yeah I've, I've had a whole lot of jobs right so I, mm -hmm. I view all my work stories as being fascinating because i suffered a whole lot but not everybody's gonna feel the same and some people don't want to hear somebody complain about work all day either so if it's the you know voice actors complain about previous or current jobs channel yeah you run into the issue of it being repetitive and since these what we do here in almost every online group I've worked with has been a skeleton crew and direct direction and interaction. It's something you really can't afford because of scheduling. I mean, we, we've got a lot to do. We're not just mm -hmm. doing this and being paid a hundred thousand dollar a year salary. You don't work <laughs> like that. I mean, it'd be nice if it did, well, yeah. <laughs> but in reality of the situation, much like working at a game store, although much better than that, I'd say still with everything being a skeleton crew, we really can't direct efficiently it's it, it is up to the person writing recording uh editing like they have to lift their weight and if they don't lift it to a certain point it just be, it's just better not to publish crap right right definitely even if you really tried hard and you did the best you could you can still just produce crap and that doesn't change anything you know i can work on it all day i can pour my heart and soul into it it could be the truest of the true stories from the facts i got video and fo photographic evidence to back it up and it can still just not be good i know i mean i kind of felt i in a way felt that same way when i submitted my story time to dolan i'm like it sounded interesting but what i i always doubted if what i wrote would actually be interesting enough for a video I always have that doubt I mean, in anything I write. I mean, not for my Reddit stories. I'm talking about thing, stories that come from my own mind, not ones that I curate. Um, I always, every time I send out a piece of fiction to get published, I always have that shred of doubt. Like, is it really what, is it really my best? Did I really put in as much effort as I <clears throat> could have? I always have that shred of doubt. 
I shouldn't, but I, I do. I believe that's completely normal from a creative standard. Mm -hmm. It's like with security. Nobody's 100%, but we all pretend we can be. In fact, we pretend we can be much more than that. Because, and especially in entertainment, in security, it's, uh, you know, 100% or nothing. In entertainment, I can do 100% of my effort and be rewarded 500% over. I mean, I know it's not really logical, but let's just say five times over. I could, I could like fall off off of my chair and fart really loudly, and somebody could have recorded it, and I could, you know, all of a sudden have uh, enough money for a year's worth of sal salary. It can be that nuts with the internet. Mm, yeah, I can believe that. So it makes sense for folks to overthink things and want to like aim as high and as hard as possible but there's diminishing returns it's like a sunken cost fallacy if i go into a script and i've done this before and put six hours into it to make sure every enunciation is as perfect as possible and i feel great about it that's good and the audience appreciates it but i can just bang one out in like two hours and get a, the same response because the writing is better or maybe the video imagery is better you know there's and they won't tell you in the comments they really shouldn't have to they're there to relax you know mm -hmm. if they leave a comment that's a nice thing for us so you can't expect all this feedback in fact there's very little feedback other than either you did it or you didn't it does tend to make you want to overwork just to make sure you uh, hit that note and it does well but on the same end all that time spent doing that and not your other responsibilities in life means that maybe you're putting too much into it and that's a hard thing to accept because you don't want to slack no but you also don't want to do this thing to where I got to be working 30 minutes, but let's just do 15 more minutes it takes before I go to work, right? Right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, so yeah. You, judging yourself is extremely hard, but unfortunately, like I said, due to the nature of online entertainment, skeleton crews spread across the globe. You have to judge yourself and you have to be a good judge of yourself. Otherwise, what you send to somebody else is going to be either rejected or, God forbid, a waste of their time if you've been hammering away at it. Hey, that's online work, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I don't publish my stuff online. I try to get it in print because it seems like more people are interested in print than they are like ebooks. It's what it seems like. I don't know. Even though ebooks are cheaper. I find that people are just really interested in audiobooks rather than ebooks so they can listen to it when they're going jogging or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then you got the collectors, right? They're not going to like an audiobook as much as a hardback or anything like that. Which is so weird because uh, if people are interested in ebooks, it's kind of the same thing with like games where uh, you'd expect people wouldn't like digital as much as physical, but that's like the kind of the same, really. They sell kind of the same, whereas no one wants an ebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me sell you my ebook. I got a Kindle right here full of ebooks. Eh. Also, ebooks way easier to pirate and loan to a friend and still keep your copy. I can't take. Well, I mean, I guess I could take a Tom Clancy novel and scan each page in a scanner, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, for the time and effort, I could also just buy another copy or just get the ebook and like just rip the damn thing. I mean, I find that to be the biggest problem with entertainment that is aimed towards, I guess, more intelligent people. They'll know how to get it for free. So if you want your really big brain entertainment it better be successful because if it's still a niche thing it's gonna die on the vine because anybody who's smart enough to like it is also smart enough to not pay for it i'd really like to turn one of my e one of my ebooks into an audiobook but the only problem is it's just not affordable to do that or at least to me whatever <laughs> but i know what you mean i do agree that audiobooks are great because yeah like you said dolan i mean people can just listen to an audiobook while take doing their morning jog it's the beauty of them it's the same with a lot of YouTube videos as well. They're uh, mostly like podcasts and stuff. Yeah. You can you can just listen to it and just do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, I find that there's a few different layers of entertainment when it comes to uh, YouTube. Some people actually do like the dull stuff. I'll play a video game like Binding of Isaac, and I'm like, really? People want to still watch this? I've been, I literally got 500 hours of this game clocked in. I've redone saves and all that. And they're like, I just like going to sleep while watching it. And I'm like, all right <laughs> you find me just kind of zoning out to like a game with some nice sound a nice soundtrack to it and just me going oh i gotta get that power up over there if that's what like helps you snooze and that's your deal great though i question as to whether the advertisements are effective maybe they're more effective i think you're going to sleep and they just hear like my voice go i gotta get that item right there in a big glowing can of dr messer yeah i think it's really interesting how people say yeah, I watch bind your binding of I of ice extremes while going to sleep. I'm surprised they don't 
say golf with friends instead because I think that'd be a much more relaxing video game to go to sleep to while watching it streamed. But that's just well, me. that gets into the the like minutia of entertainment and how you do things like audio design and everything like that. The reason why a game like Binding of Isaac works so good or, you know, it goes right into voice acting and everything else too is that the music and the sound is just right to mellow out to. Nothing's too high, nothing's too, you know, exuberant, nothing's too poppy and cheery. It's very, very methodically designed with a really, really good and mellow ambient soundtrack. To where comparably Golf with Friends, you hear like loud putt sounds like. No, oh, right, yeah. Kind of stuff. So maybe it's a little bit of that, or maybe it's just familiarity. There, I could go over all the different things that attract me to certain videos anyways. As far as what everybody in general likes, well, that changes, doesn't it? It does change. It changes with the time. I would say it's cyclical, but it definitely does change. <laughs> like, there is, there is uh, NSYNC, then Jonas Brothers, then Justin Bieber, or whatever, then K-pop, and then everybody acts like these things are different. Like it's any different than the Beatles. Right. Like it goes back far. And that's a really good metric for like the cyclical loop of entertainment, right? And it's generational and it's bizarre how similar like you could like the fact that you can compare the Beatles to K-pop in any way, shape, or form just by looking at it, be like, what? I don't get it outside the fact we got five boys there, but that's the theme. That's pop. Same thing with countdowns. Uh, they've been around forever. Mm-hmm. It's still a valid format. It still works, but it doesn't always work. And it may not always be the route that you should be taking. Maybe it's a route for somebody else. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell where to move in the cycle to. You could do one thing five months too early and it could become a way big thing later. And it's like, damn, if only I just delayed that for five months, I could have been on the gravy train. Oh. Entertainment's very confusing like that. <laughs> I agree. With me with uh, like countdowns, like the fat countdowns that plant don't that we used to do. I mean, there are there could there are always a ton of topics. Like I don't think you could ever run out of topics. The question is, would this topic produce a good video that people would want to watch and not immediately click off? Yeah, you yeah, kind of choose you choose the best topics when you first start out, like the most interesting ones, mm -hmm. and then you just kind of go down the list, right? And so inevitably you get to the the, the point where you're just choosing average topics because there's just no good ones left. That's just what happens. It yeah. has a has a certain amount of. Uh, Life to it. Do you guys miss doing the fat countdowns? No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, no, maybe yeah. out of habit, right? Like there's some things that if you do it out of habit for too long and it's gone, the heart grows fonder with absence. Mm -hmm. So like, while I may be like, man, I wish I had another countdown. You guys would give me something on avionics again and I'd fuck, I would fuck. would want to kill you. I'd be like, there's all these foreign names and you didn't like link anything on how to enunciate any of them. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I should just mispron mispronounce every name intentionally and we'll just make a gag out of it. But uh, I've had enough fun doing them and I've seen enough folks being entertained by them that I could, uh, if I knew folks were gonna watch, I'd happily jump back on it. But if I think folks were disinterested or just not interested in it anymore, I, I don't have any reason. I'm not gonna sit in my garage or whatever and make those just for myself, for example. I might read somebody's story in here back to see how good of a storyteller I am to an extent, but I can't think of any reason why I would sit there and go, boy, time to read this top 10 fact list and then just listen to it myself and then delete it. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you'd ever run out of topics, but yeah, you do have diminishing returns in terms of the quality of what you select to do. I think if you're going to get a key loop for that kind of thing, it would need to be cyclical, like I talked about with the pop music. If you found like the spice yeah. for like the perfect <laughs> cyclical loop of countdowns from like uh, historical to apocalyptic to animal to celebrity uh the technology then all the way back around he was like this is the perfect cycle and this is how we'll push it forward sure it could work out real great but it's that's a lot of if i knew if there was if i had my crystal ball kind of talk to where i find that at least from what i've seen on planet dolan moving and not not just planet dolan but a lot of other things once an axe worn out it's usually a smarter move to retire it than to hold on to it for dear life because almost everybody i've seen who's held on to like one gimmick for dear life if they don't just fail anyways they're miserable while they're failing i'd rather <laughs> if it ever came down to it and things really got horribly apocalyptic let's say youtube limits videos to two minutes they do something like 
real crazy. <laughs> I at least want to have fun. Yeah, because if you're not having fun, then it might show with your it might show within your work, and I guess other people when they hear it won't be as entertained or entertained at all. Or at least if absolutely nobody's entertained, I want to be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> at least one of us wins, you know. I just want to say, like, with Fat Countdown's help, and I just want to say this really quick, and that is, I really miss our battles in terms of puns. Every time you'd read a pun, you'd go after me. <laughs> that was fun. I tried was not fun. to overdo it because I thought it would be <laughs> obnoxious for the viewer, but I feel like a little back and forth between, between the writer was a good thing. Uh, especially in the countdowns because folks ask me all the time, what's it like working at Planet Dolan HQ? And I'm just like, there's, there's no Planet Dolan HQ. We're <laughs> spread, we're, we're spread across the internet or the internet, the world and the internet. So any chance I get to have a repertoire with somebody, whether they have like a willing response or not, it just makes it seem, well, it doesn't make it seem, it actually shows that we can communicate in some way despite deadlines, despite offline stuff and just everything else non-internet that kind of gets in the way of having a hobby like this, especially one that's a bit more professional. I would call it outright job, really. So, right. you know, call it a second job. It's probably a better way to put it. It's so easy to get disconnected, though. You'll have that with any job. You just get, you may, you may talk to your coworkers, but there's a disconnect to mm -hmm. where right. you respect them and you like them, but they're not your friend. You know what I mean? To where yeah. I can, I can honestly say Derek and Dolan are my friends, but that guy I worked with at the game store, I guess I don't want him to die or anything, but like, if he were starving right now, I'd be like, that sucks, man. <laughs> Instead of like, here, <laughs> well, Helvet, I promise you that a vast majority of the puns in my fat count on scripts were totally unintentional. Most I of them. I, I find myself making puns, but I can also, I'm, it's possible that you've somehow like embedded that in me and that makes me frustrated. <laughs> I feel like I need to cause some undue mental trauma to you to like even the scale eye for an eye, you know? Yeah, I know. People ask me, how did you join Planet Dome? Well, I, I sent them an email, but I was a long time viewer as well. Mm. And uh, same deal as Sam T who does the Dead by Daylight parodies, um, voicing those as a it's a character named Frank. He kind of talks like this. It's like that one voice, but I take away the accent. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm taking over twice. I don't know why I got cast to do that voice, but there it is. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I watched him, too, for a really long time. Well, before he, like, took off with those uh, parodies. And I guess as an actor, at least on the Internet, I find that if you're a fan of something and you, you just, like, consume a bit of media and participate in the comment section, make yourself known to the person as somebody who enjoys their work, if they see success, they'll remember you if you got some kind of talent that you think may help with something like that. So I'd say if you're an aspiring voice actor or artist or something like that, it might not hurt to somehow make yourself known. That's harder than ever, though. Yeah. Like back in those days, the top rated comment was up at the top. Now they like kind of shuffle them. I noticed that, too. Yeah. So like if you were a content creator, a big one, and you wanted to like keep an eye on like who's got like a real good focus, like really tapping into the thought process of your video and having really good stuff to say about it and participating well well they're just gonna get buried and that's awful it's awful because some of those comments are pretty good you know it isn't just first or remember when this was danger dolan you know shit like that i mean some of those comments are, are good comments they're reasonable comments but yeah like you said yeah. they get lost i think how it works is uh in i think in the first like hour or so they choose the top comments like a, a few and then they keep them there and then it shuffles them uh, either over time or when a certain amount of new comments have been made and then it'll pick like a few new top comments and uh, so it's still the same system but it refreshes every so often uh, I'm not particular I don't really know the reason like whether or not it is time based or uh, engagement based or, or or like a mix or whatever but yeah I, I noticed that. But yeah, sometimes I notice that like some of the first comments that were made on the video are the top comments and they're completely relevant to anything. And then there are like a bunch of really good comments under underneath it that aren't at the top, but then they'll appear at the top later on. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's true. There's almost always early comment. I remember when I'd watch Planet Dolan videos, I'd try to make the earliest comment possible that's tangentially related to the video. Yeah. That way it's not like, ha ha, D D D Donald Dolan <laughs> and you know lots of likes because it's like that's the first comment yep, yep. I see I'm clicking like 
Instead, it's, you know, like, oh, well, you know, locomotive uh, construction in the 1800s, huh? Well, that was a really cool story about the Archduke and his giant railroad catastrophe in her comment. Like, it takes not, not but a second, but I don't know. I feel like networking with everybody is very important. Networking with your audience is probably one of the more important things, at least if you ever, if you ever find yourself wondering, I just don't know what they like anymore. You got to read their comments. Mm -hmm. Like my own YouTube channel, I run it just like nothing. And, uh, you know, it shows. <laughs> so, it, it, it's nice that it, people enjoy me just being self-indulgent. But you can you can find a good medium. I think that we've done that really well. I enjoy reading scripts. Even during my, like, most angry moments reading a script, there's still genuine emotion there. And frankly, I have a hard time getting that out of myself these days. So... <laughs> If it's anger at a pun or interest in something, or if somebody just writes something in a true story that allows me a chance to emote and act and like really try to elevate the material instead of just letting it sag behind me, I find that to be exciting and fun. Yeah, and going back to the uh, whole rapport, I guess, with your you know, with your coworkers, or going you no, know, it was us going back and forth, like with my with back when I wrote fact countdowns, you would sometimes narrate them and. You come across an unintentional pun, but still call it out and then give me shit about it. But anyway, I mean, I think that's probably one of the reasons why the Super Planet Dome videos, those Q&As, are also so popular. Because there's a lot of banter between the uh, two uh, actors. Yeah, it's, it's all written in as well. Right. Um, sometimes there's improv, but yeah. Usually, my favorite part of writing SPD is always to get in the head and the voice of the character and then just have them go back and forth in that way. When I'm reading, I try not to improv too much on SPD because I know it's being put to animation. Mm. So I know if, if I start adding snide little one-liners and stuff, like after every sentence, like, okay, well, that's an extra second. No, that's another second. That's another second. Well, we just made the artist draw like 12, <laughs> 13. <Yeah. more> frames. <laughs> so I tried to replace content where necessary, but not very often did I. I mean, Mookluck writes real good. Dolan writes real good. I never had a SPD episode where I'm like, wow, this is fucking trash. I better fix it because I, 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 I'm I, 100% sure if I completely redid my lines and sent them in, I'd get, a, I'd get a kind message asking, can you read that as we wrote it, please? Yeah, the funny thing is sometimes if someone like forgets to read a line out, we, we generally find really creative ways to work around it uh, where a character has said something the other character responds but then the original line is gone and so all we've got is the response to the thing and so we we, we put in like a line to james shark saying okay so there's they're not reacting to anything so we need like a visual gag for them to react to and uh we can make it work we've done that a whole bunch of times and i think they 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 blend in really well but it's always funny when that happens it's usually pringle <laughs> 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 it, like forgets a line or something and then we're like oh how do we work around this oh i've had my moments uh, i recently turned in something for sam t last second and there was a line i missed and it wasn't very much right he, he gave me like four or five lines worth of stuff to do and i missed line three and i was mortified i was like wow i'm an idiot like i never felt uh, it's like i've been doing this for five years and i'm still missing lines do i need to go to like the doctor or something am i <laughs> is this like a tumor <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, I think that it, it has a little bit to do with the fact that, okay, let's say if we were going to do direction, we're, we're going to act like a professional studio, even though we're all spread apart. <laughs> Doing voice direction on YouTube or Twitter or Twitch or whatever. Or Twitter. I'm uh, sorry. You know, doing doing uh, voice direction on Discord. That's what I meant to say. I've done it before. It's a nightmare. It, it's an absolute nightmare. The person on the other end won't hear what you said because once it gets through the discord machine the quality's lowered so you don't hear every little nuance of the voice and while you may think like oh well i you know a little bit of quality doesn't matter i know the energy that they got there's a subtlety to all of it just like animation just like editing just like writing there's little bits and pieces that nobody will compliment you on say anything about or really notice but they're more important than you can shut up cell phone they're more important than you can imagine. <laughs> Works work, although it is a bit of a gamble, but what is it? I mean, you know, I've lost plenty of jobs that weren't online. It was equally scary and terrible. Well, doing any job that's artistic is a gamble. I'd Hugely. Say. Oh yeah. What am I gonna what am I gonna do? Walk up to like 
<laughs> electricity company and go, I don't know if you understand, but it used to be a real big deal. You told me <laughs> the power plant. They're going to be like, okay, what's your qualifications? Here's some YouTube links. Right. I think you'll find more than enough. I don't even think I can get a job at a Denny's like that. I think they'd tell me to get out. They might even hit me. Yeah, the, yeah, the one binding of Isaac's Extreme. You maybe fall asleep. Oh, gracious. No, I, <laughs> uh, I think it's a good portfolio deal and all that, but local acting jobs and just acting in general, this job's a, a tremendous blessing. Every actor I've ran across outside of the Planet Dolent sphere, our Planet, Planet Dolent. See, that's something I'd retake that a lot of. They're happy with their jobs, but nothing's very permanent, and folks don't seem to have a job for them that sticks. It's like once the show's over, show's over, mm -hmm. done. And most shows, you know, if you put together a pilot or like an internet series, once it reaches its conclusion, that's it. It's done. Uh, Planet Dolan's been very renewable and fun to do for many years. So it's outpaced a lot of other jobs that I've had as far as sustainability and just outright fun. It's rewarding. Oh, same here. I mean, not only is it fun, but I've met a lot of great people. I've also, well, if it wasn't for Planet Dolan, I wouldn't have been able to buy my house. I mean, that's, that's probably the biggest right there. Well, that, that I mean, if, if I saw that as a review on like Yelp, I'd be like, all right. <laughs> Plenty yeah, to be grateful for. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I think when we uh, when we started hiring people, um, I think our only objective was that you know we pay people fairly and that we we let them work as much or as little as they want, and also for them to have a stake in it, which is to have a character and have them be featured in shit. I mean, I know from working places myself that um, usually you just get treated like garbage and then you get thrown away and everything. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, that's just, that's just kind of fair, fair treatment and yeah. That's definitely not just an internet issue. Like you can go across the board through Hollywood, people moving to LA to where milk costs $3 and you know, you got to pay $1,200 for a single bedroom efficiency. Oh yeah. You know, moving out there is awful. So yeah, we may have a skeleton crew and a lack of direction and all that, but I can get up out of my bedroom and record and I also don't have to pay you know four thousand dollars a month just to get by and still <laughs> like have to eat ramen for life right so yeah. you know what can I say it, it's a unique uh it's a very unique opportunity it's very hard for me to go into all of the details other than I count my blessings another thing I like about you know Planet Dolan is that like the videos change like the types of videos like right now we're doing those viral videos I mean it's something way different from say you know the fact countdowns I mean it's still a, I mean yeah yeah it's in the same vein yeah it's the same uh, vein I really yeah. enjoyed I really enjoyed putting those together it's a shame that I don't think people care about them that much and that's that's fair enough I've been doing animated videos for God only knows how long um but I've had the urge to do something like that lately yeah it, it's I think it's just more of a, 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 a type of audience issue, really. Yeah, yeah I quite, there, quite enjoy putting it together. There could be a lot of issues that go into that, I wager, but you're having fun, and the viewership's not too bad, but uh, it's it's all relative. I find doing entertainment, you always want to exceed what you did before. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if you fall below it or go uh, like a little bit too far south, you're like, well, can I at least get back to that one level? And maybe you do, maybe you get a little bit better, but it can still fall again, and it's this race to keep on going. Very few people can continue the same act for more than a year without something stagnating. And I, I can like give you a million examples for it, but you can see in every popular creator that you know, like they can be very popular. You might see the first video in a series do really well, then like look somewhere in the middle. It's like, whoa, nobody watched. They just kind of gave up after episode three, huh? Yeah, keeping an audience like engaged and keep making sure an audience, which with the size of Planet Dolan's is almost impossible. And to know about what you plan to do and what you're gonna do in the future, it's yeah, just already, impossible, you know? Yeah, I've already told the audience what I wanna do, which is to make cartoons. I'm, I'm, I'm actually been, I'm actually scripting them right now. I've been doing that all day. That's the thing I wanna do. Uh, everything I do, everything else I do is just like, kind of stuff to, uh, just side stuff, like in the meantime kind of stuff. But yeah, that's all, I, that's all I'm focusing on really. <laughs> It's just that it's a shame it hasn't, I mean, we've only been, really been trying for the last couple of years, but uh, yeah, that, that eats up all my focus. Mm -hmm. I can understand that completely. Uh, most of us have work outside of Planet Dolan and like I run my own business. So, you know, mm -hmm. 
it's hard to it's hard to drop that. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? right. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard to drop that attitude, especially of, I started a YouTube channel or something like that for fun. Okay, it's business now, I have responsibilities to meet. But once it becomes to the point where none of it's fun, and even if it is a full-time job, we're still dealing with entertainment, which once you become numb, once nothing's entertaining anymore, and you're jaded, not maybe not jaded, but at least burnt out, sunblasted, there we go, there's a really overblown expression. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're just decayed and you're done and the, you have no more life force to tap out, you just go through the motions. And that's what was good about the countdowns. You could go through the motions with the countdowns. I could have the worst day in the world and I could still get up and do a countdown because I know, you know, one, two, three, one to 10, you know, we just read it out. Mm -hmm. True story is a bit more tricky. If I do the true story and I don't sell it and it's kind of, then they went across the block to their neighbor's house. They went inside, inside. A messed up thing happened wasn't that a wacky story on the next one <laughs> that's i don't even i would doubt you guys would publish more than one of those at least as a joke and then you get into the higher end the super planet dolan or the animated stuff to where it's like okay now it's it's kind of serious time the people who wrote this are good the animators are good and i'm just you know one piece of this operation i'm not so much the you know i think with the countdown you get to kind of be the lead as an actor but when it comes to Super Planet Dolan, you're, you're second stage of the animation. You may be like a star, I guess to put it one way or another, but you're working with another actor and the animation teams behind you and the writing teams behind you. So there's not a whole lot to elevate. I can elevate a, a number nine on the Pompeii volcano. You know what I mean? Even the person who gathered that fact just gives you the straight facts. But as an actor, you can elevate that. You can make it pop you can make it snap but the entirety of a super planet Dolan episode is making it pop and snap as much as you can because there's not a whole lot for an actor to do to elevate it like you are being put through the ringer as hard as possible so yeah I, a little routine's not bad at least if people are watching it anyhow <laughs> is that what you would do like if you were reading a fact countdown script and if you saw rather like a list item that was rather, I don't know, not very as interesting as the others or kind of, or just written kind of bland. Would you try as an actor to, uh, I guess, elevate it, make it more exciting and interesting and all that? Absolutely. A lot of the challenge I've found in acting was uh, letting stuff go. And I found I had a lot more fun and pride if I noticed something was particularly shit. It's like, wow, this is just like fluff. Let's be more exuberant. Let's act. Let's pop. Or let's add some, add a little snide, vaguely offensive thing in the middle. <laughs> you know, just right, something, yeah. <laughs> something to spice it up. You know, it's like it's like it's a boiled steak we got here. What are we gonna do to it? Throw some pepper on it. I don't know. Anything, you know, anything to the get out of the uh, mundane. Like, I mean, even documentaries do it. Boring as government funded documentaries, they still hire an actor that can like make it sound a little bit interesting, even if it's not. At least you think that the actor cares about it or he's really interested in telling you about it. But if the person acting doesn't feel like they're interested in telling you about it or even care about it, and they're literally just reading words and just processing data audibly into your ears and into your brain. It becomes a little bit too mechanical. And at that point, you kind of lose what makes you you. And mm -hmm. at that point, I do feel if somebody became completely monotone, unless that was their thing, which it can be in rare cases, always an exception. But I feel if you just die into the monotone and just give in and just hate it, then it, it just won't work. What about you, Dolan? Yeah, I'm kind of in the unique position where um, I'm in charge of the content as well as as well as voicing it. And uh, I found that if I'm not interested in the scripts, it's like I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be taking a long time to voice it. Uh, that or I am just going to voice it, and my brain is going to be a hundred miles away from here. Generally, I try and pick scripts that I find interesting anyway. Um, but there have definitely been times where I've, I've had to just force it out. Um, and after doing this for so long, um, me, my, my more ideal work environment right now is to work with people in, in person as if they were real people uh, in, in that kind of environment. Um, and so to voice stuff uh, for people like just under the internet in this vague concept uh, it takes a toll after a bunch of years because I've been doing this for like six years straight uh, and so even if the script is is 
pretty good at this point. I don't really care. So it's hard for me to get enthusiasm for stuff anyway, but that's my issue. <laughs> I think you'll find a lot of people have difficult finding enthusiasm for art. I, I've seen some of the most talented artists I know just in a pit of like, I don't care anymore. And then it's like, you don't care anymore? Let's look at the latest drawing or whatever. And it's like, wow, this is stupid good. And it's like, yeah, I guess I made it last night. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe you're bored of entertainment. Who knows? It's possible. Sometimes I yeah. get in that mood. I'm like, am I really tired of it though? Because then I find, I think like, okay, what if I quit doing it for six months? Would that drive me insane? Like, I, yeah, I'm bored now, but I've been doing this for five years. It's certainly a habit. If I just like took a six month vacation and just stopped caring, would there be anything in me? It's like, man, I could just jump right back in on there. Couldn't I like, wouldn't I want to, I know I would, but then again, that's, that's my personality. I, I thrive in it. Even if, if even if what I'm reading is crap, I'm like, this is crap that a lot of people are going to like, cause I'm going to make sure they like it. And then when they do like it, I feel very validated. It builds my ego up. And that's the most important thing in the world. My massive ego. <laughs> all artists have egos, massive egos. All of them do. All the ones I've I've had, argu anyway. <laughs> I've, had I've had arguments with musicians and I'm like, dude, it's ego driven. You are on the stage waiting for them to clap for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys. <laughs> you get, you get sad when they don't clap. And when they do clap, you, you're just like, yeah, that's right. Next song. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> work with me. Nobody had mentioned that clever paraphrasing I did in my script. Are they supposed to? No. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, it, there, there has to be an element of doing it for yourself. Yeah. And if you, if you have no drive to do it, I mean, doing it for other people is part of a drive, too. So... If you don't feel any gratification for bringing these people or your audience entertainment in the way that you have been, then yeah, that's important for the entertainer. Uh, some folk, I like me personally, just the fact that folks are being entertained, that's kind of my base level. That's my foundation, my bedrock. If it falls below that point and just nobody's entertained, it's just like, boo, I'm bored. I'm like, okay, this is pointless. <laughs> but if folks are entertained, I can still do it. But if I'm entertained and the folks are entertained, I can definitely do it. And then if everybody's entertained and there's a big fat stack of cash there and people are telling me I'm the best person in the world, I guess that's okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I think we all would. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, it depends. Life goals and all that, like, it, it's not always enough just to have, like, money adoration and all that. It can definitely be a thing to where you just don't feel personally enriched by it. And if you can't get past that, then it's definitely time for a switch. Because again, I know a lot. I've I've seen people or artists rather say, "I can't believe I bought another freaking Wacom tablet. I buy one every few years. I hate this hobby. It's a time sink. It's taking my time. It's taking my money." And I'm like, "Whoa, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't get that tablet. Holy, <laughs> jeez." <laughs> Just maybe take a break or maybe find a different avenue of entertainment, you know? Right. I mean, if the biggest thing that's uh, causing you to be so sad in your uh, quote unquote artistic pursuit, because, well, I'm going to back up here. A lot of people say that you have to be willing to spend money as an artist. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. But you got to be realistic about that. Like, for an example is I was trying to hire someone to create a book cover for one of my books. And I noticed the prices were like seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars, which I guess is the norm. But I mean, with for me anyway, that's fucking months worth of bills, mortgage, HOA fees, gas, electric, you name it. That's skinny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, I, I don't think that's the norm. Um, really? Oh, okay. Uh, no. I, yeah, I was about to comment. <laughs> yeah, like, but you didn't get there a cover. Noah guy. <laughs> you were, you're talking about a book cover, right? Yeah, like, right. Are you talking right, about right. animated or like a photorealistic one or what? Uh, just like a, just like your standard book cover, like you'd see in like a bookstore. Graphic design kind Graphic of thing? Graphic design, yeah, there you go. I'm going to cut you a deal. I'll do it for you for $850. <laughs> what a shut deal, up, Shut up. What a deal, man. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Ben himself will do the book. Shh, shh. Well, then again, what do I know about this stuff? 
<laughs> I know nothing. I know and nothing. Around later. Don't pay that much money for a fucking. I will motor. never. I will never. I don't care how much you love your riding or how proud you are of it. Don't pay that much for a cover. I will never do that. I just paid like. I just paid like five bucks for a cover. It's pretty fucking cool. There so, you go. Yes, yeah, so I. Yeah. Find yourself a starving artist who has a lot of talent and no, like, you know, gig. There are plenty of them, and they will they will love you to death for giving them a proper gig, especially one that they can put in their portfolio. Yeah, I mean, I saw eighteen hundred dollars. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, you know what it is. You're thinking of artists that work for big companies because big companies throw money away like it's tissue paper, and so they're used to getting stuff like that. And, and so that's their expectations. Uh, okay. Like every time I've had, I've reached out to someone or they reach out to me and they're like, oh, I'll do like animation or art or whatever. And the prices are like, you know, five, six figures. And they're like, yeah, previously I worked with Nickelodeon or whatever. I'm like, well, that's why, isn't it? Yeah. I got, <laughs> they're I just throwing you. money at you. I mean, I get it. <laughs> You got to have your salary and all that, but it is an internet internet job. And I know it's, it, I mean, it's not nice to say, but as big as the internet is, it's still inexpensive. That's the lure of the internet. It's instant wireless transmission to people who pay to, for the privilege to transmit all this stuff. It's trimming the fat off a lot of stuff. That's why we run a skeleton cruise. That's why we don't pay, you know, six figure salaries for jobs that in Hollywood would get you like who knows how much eighty eight hundred thousand dollars who ridiculous sums for some people that's just not gonna fly in online entertainment because that's just not there yet like very rare that you can i can come up with a couple of examples but those are again the exception to the rule so you gotta you gotta work within a frame of sanity that's again why i've always treated this job as like oh fuck i don't want to lose this job because yeah finding something that pays like that is fantastic and even then i hate to say it but anybody it's like i, I wouldn't care if they worked at nickelodeon it's like oh i, I worked at a big animation company you should hire me it's like yeah but you get to work out of your bedroom so we're cutting that out uh you don't have to travel you don't have to worry about this that or the other so and you, and you want how much <laughs> it's like hey <laughs> not nah, i think we'll be okay I, i'll go go to new grounds there's there's some kid there that will be totally happy for like 28 bucks an hour to do a few little animation bits for me and not require a salary and health benefits just the an nature of the beast not it's not that you don't want to hell if I had it my way, I would, uh, I'd pay everybody a salary for everything, but it's just not there. You know, mm. we're not Planet Dolan's not a publicly traded company. We don't got investors on the NASDAQ and all that. Come on. <laughs> we got, got Viacom in our back laying out copyright claims on anybody who messes with us, influencing major media companies. Nah, I mean, at least do we Dolan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what stocks are. So <laughs> okay, no. so we don't. Well, you know what? That's fine by me. <laughs> yeah, the expectations can be pretty radical. Um, uh, again, some folks are like you must live in a mansion, Holman. It's like, well, no, <laughs> but I got a house. You know, it, it's. Hold the man, why things. you have a mansion? I don't have a mansion. What the hell? Give me a <laughs> well. <laughs> thing is i stole it if you tell me about the story i'm gonna steal you maybe i'll steal your mansion you'll wake up one day and you'll just be in a bed out in the field i'll sue <laughs> what's a man what's a mansion i have a fucking castle what are you talking about derek's over here with the castle <laughs> good take that oh yeah well i'm gonna go find the lost city of atlantis and just move on in gonna go move on an oil platform and install a bunch of artillery cannons on it so you can't kidnap me in the night you planet doll members are rich fucks yeah i and make 80 hundred trillion dollars a year and thanks for that you know, yeah it's, it's an under table <laughs> deal the ceo of youtube hired me to come over to her ch child's <laughs> never mind i can't say that uh allegedly <laughs> I do birthday parties was a joke, by the way. I probably should have finished that one off. Anyways, no, I don't I don't have any big media connections. It's, it's often a disappointment to people when I let them know that. Yeah, I don't either. But I don't know. I find at least most people when it comes to this kind of thing, they go in with the passion and they succeed if they can still keep that passion. Like, it's easy to go in and go, I, I've drawn a couple of times. I want to make cartoons for YouTube. And then you get burnt out quicker. 
I seen countdowns. I'll make them too. You get burnt out quick. Not seeing numbers go up and all that can be very uh, demoralizing. But at least my, me personally, although my channel isn't doing too great now, it always started out small. Everything starts out without, without a lot of traction. People like familiarity, you know? Oh, well, they do, yeah. Especially after you've been doing something for like half a decade. So anything new is going to be a hard sell, but I like to think of it back during the old days when you first start and had no aspirations or expectations. You're just making this because like, hey, I know how to use video editing. <laughs> and you put it together, you put it online and it's yeah. like, oh, look, 50 people watched it. Neato. But then after you've been doing it for five years, enough people have been around, you put something up. It's like, you know, oh, 9000 people watched. Ouch. <laughs> And then again, to another scale, if I was doing something on my YouTube channel, I saw 9,000 people watch it, be like, yeah, I did it. Woo. <laughs> so it's all relative, but it's good not to lose track with like that beginning phase that you had. Mm -hmm. You got to remember what that felt like. If it worked for you once, then it could work again. It's the best lead you got to continue forward and know that you might at least find a few years of satisfaction in your acting and art or whatever it may be. Yeah, I think it's good to be humble. It helps. It helps. It's helped me anyway. And just stay in touch with the side of you that it's not that nobody ever cares about having their stuff seen, but the side of you that's like lowered expectations, not expecting something to work off the bat, maybe have to do something for more than a year even before it catches on. And it may never, you know, not everybody gets lucky. Tons of people have tried what we've done before and they failed horribly. So were we lucky or did we just do the right thing right place right time it's hard to tell mm -hmm. you mentioned it before do you guys think you'd ever get burnt out well with helping would you get burnt do you think you'll ever get burnt out with voice acting dolan do you think you'll ever get burnt out with writing stories or is it kind of hard to say uh, well i can i can say all right uh I took on security work over the summer up till now and uh balancing three jobs counting this was a bit more than i'm used to However, now that I'm, and even after coming back, I was like, man, I don't know if I'm so good for acting. And I'm doing the best I can. I think spreading out and doing work for other people has helped out a lot. It, it keeps my interest a little bit more to like, not always play only helping all the time. But a big part of that is, at least for me, if I know somebody's going to watch it, they're going to be entertained by it. No matter the situation, I can find validation to do it because I can put myself in the shoes of any time I've been sitting there hungry, hungry for content. I was scrolling through YouTube today. I was like, I haven't watched YouTube video in a while, just out on a whim. Let's go look at my subscriptions. I'm like, wow, all this is just boring. So, you know, if I just saw one video there that piqued my interest, I'd be like, mm, good stuff. So for the people that have that feeling for it, I empathize. And that's a good motivator. Yeah, I think with uh, <clears throat> getting better at writing, I, um, uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever run into that issue because I've never actually been paid to write stories i've never had to write them on a deadline and so i've, I've never had to uh, run into the issue of like having a creative thing uh i guess the closest thing you, i can think of is maybe spd uh and like sure there's, there have definitely been times where i i haven't um, wanted to write as much as others but yeah i'm i've always had the urge and the drive to do it I think it's more just you'll be writing a lot, you'll be writing stories and, and, and you'll be really into it and then you might just have months where you just forget to do it or you uh, get distracted by something else or maybe you're sick for a period and then after that you can't get back into the rhythm. It's less burnout, more getting distracted mm. and, and just kind of forgetting. Mm, right. I have an issue to where I will if I have something that's due the next day, I can sit here and just be like, man, I want to play a video game. I'll just look at my Steam and I'll just be like, I'm not, I want to play a video game. Why do I have no urge to do it? And it's that little nagging sense in the back of my head. It's like script, you know, right. so there's people waiting for this, not just the folks waiting to work on it, but the folks waiting to see it. They're waiting for you. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, but, but I want to play, I want to play Binding of Isaac. And Brain's like, yeah, you do, but you don't feel like it now. Why? <laughs> and I kind of like find myself, I'm like, why can't I have fun right now? I'm I'm okay. Everything's fine. And I don't know. There's uh, I guess that's my motivation. It's always been the audience at the end of the day. I know that's real cliche and like sappy, but uh, I don't know. It just feels like a mutually beneficial act to work on Planet Dolan, entertain people and have something that I have fun doing, at least in comparison to working out in the heat. Even the worst script is still better than 
like hard ass manual labor. And not to mention it's a lucky position on top of that. So you got a lucky position, you got people waiting for you, you know, all this other yeah. stuff. Lots to be grateful for. It's very hard to sit there with all that in the back of your head and go, yeah, I'll just play a video game. It's like, now nah, I got to put this down and go to sleep, wake up early, act, then go on with it later. Yeah, what you mean? I mean, I, as much as I love to write, work on one of my stories every day, I just can't. I mean, either it's not that I don't always feel like it, it's just I have other endeavors I have to take care of. Well, for one, my full time job <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it takes up all day. So I know, so I know what you guys are saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got you're gonna have to go to the job, but it, it's uh, <laughs> well, when, well, let me put it this way when the work that you do is something that you find joy and a sense of reward doing, it can affect what you do elsewise when it comes to hobbies. Let's say if I was just doing my regular work, I'd come home, I'll do my regular work, come home, pop on Dark Souls 2 or something like that, and play that without any other thought other than me and the video game and nothing else but when i come home from work and there's more work waiting but it's work i enjoy doing so it's like a hobby but extra i can be exhausted but still feel like i can't enjoy anything until i get this one specific thing out of the way because it's what i want to do the most no matter how exhausted i am and you get a little internal conflict there with that everybody handles it differently me personally i just view it as an acting challenge or that is to say uh if i can be totally miserable and still sound chipper and happy like i'm having a good time and not like a waiter to where you know waiters like hey would you like uh, extra cheese sticks with that buddy not like that just you know like your friend's talking with you and it's a good day. Right. If I can yeah. just snap into that, then I'm doing good as an actor. And it can help you out in life, too. It has a lot of good uses. But most importantly, you know, reading scripts. <laughs> and, of course, it's where good writing comes into play. Um, when you do things like puns and it, you know, gets me upset, I'm like, oh, he's doing it again. And we got a little... It's a little surprise, something waiting in the script for me to, like, jump in and improv and just spice it up a little bit so it's not the same paint by numbers you know fr fr first word last word script reading deal we can kind of flex about on it probably what i wanted to do the most was really rip on some of the true stories that i believe to be false the only thing that reeled me back is i don't know these people <laughs> they get me really excited it's like hey oh my god they're, they're gonna read my story hooray and I come in and go, yeah, this, is a, this, is, this story is written by an idiot. This is bullshit. Stupid, <laughs> stupid dumb head. Who, who, what kind of idiotic mind would conjure this pile of crap? And they're just like, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> you know, I, even I'd feel bad about that. I'd be like, oh man, I'm a dick. <laughs> so, you know, just like I felt excited when I first got a response back on an email. I would hate to take somebody's uh, super duper true story and just like actually dump on it unless I read it and know uh, that's the that's what gets me. There's I got a sense for that. If I detect any mean spiritedness in the story and it's crap, I'm like, OK, well, you live by the <laughs> you live by the edge. You, you die by the edge. Let's go <laughs> show, show me your worst and I'll make sure to pile mine on top of it. That's fun. But if it's just an innocent, boring story, it's like, well, one day I took my doggy to the park and he found another doggy and they played for an hour and it was like really cool. And so that's my doggy story. <laughs> you go, yeah, my dogs are dirty. And he ran around the park and humped another dog. They were both stupid. I hate them. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you don't want to do that to somebody's no. story. No. That sounds like a lot of the story times that we've been getting in emails. Yeah, I can only imagine like the cutting room floor. Like I might complain but I'm not the one who has to read all of them in my head. Like I only get exposed to like 10 of them, <laughs> you know? So there's that. <laughs> and there's totally ones I'm sure you would really wish you could forget just because of the, you know, vulgar content. Like it's the internet, it's people type vulgar stuff. It's unavoidable. They can come with all the language filters they want. You're going to read something you wish you didn't. Yeah, so it makes me wonder. Well, speaking of that, I mean, do you try to do improv? help it like as much as possible as much as i feel like won't cross the line into being obnoxious mm. because the last thing i want to do is like have a good thing with the improv stuff and then somehow burn everybody out on it on one like ill-fated script so that any attempted improv after that is looked at with the scrutiny of a nostalgia critic uh skit you know what i mean mm -hmm. in fact they're a good measure i mean 
nostalgia critic videos are pretty good don't get me wrong but most people that i know don't like the comedy routine right mm. and it's because there's too much of it if there's less of it i think people find it more tolerable so i figure less is more don't want to oversaturate it if you want to do a show where you're making fun of people's stories make that the show but if you just want to sprinkle a little bit that a little bit of that in there maybe on like story four just uh throw people for a loop if they've been sticking in for that long right just don't make it okay right just don't make it tiresome don't do it so much yeah. that's tiresome yeah keep it special better to do too little than too much when it comes to altering somebody's vision right <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna do it at all anyways but you know i i overthink things very much so there's also a strong possibility everything i just mentioned nobody gives a fuck about but i do and i remember these things so you know after a point it's kind of like you know dolan doing what he's doing with the reaction videos after a point you just got to look at it all and go this is complicated i'm just gonna do what i want let's do what i want i mean isn't that why we all pay for an internet connection to begin with was to come on here and have fun anyhow it kind of was actually <laughs> yeah, i can't imagine paying for an internet connection just to be angry bitter and to do nothing but <laughs> stuff i hate it's like yeah 90 bucks a month sign me up for the double plan Come on, let's go. I have so many angry things to write and do. <laughs> yeah, I still want to pay my bills online instead of sending them in the mail. I'm so excited yeah. about that. <laughs> Just can't wait to pay my bills and get into a long, drawn-out political argument on Twitter where I embarrass my entire family by tagging them. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I'd rather, I'd rather play virtual golf and uh, stick around my little hole on YouTube and voice act for other people. I've found a lot of, uh, I don't know, I'd say it's, it's fairly therapeutic to stream and, like, you know, jump on and be Mr. Voice Actor and all that. It's uh, one thing everybody can use a hand. And even among some of the crowds I've worked with, it's like, is that Helvin from Planet Dolan? I'm like, really? I guess I've just been doing this for long enough. It didn't seem like too big of a deal. I talk with folks all the time. I'm not a hard guy to get in contact with. No. So, you know, there's always that little special feeling when, like, your nephew's watching a video that you worked on or maybe you find somebody within your field of uh, work that's an actor who's like, oh, my God, it's him from that? I'm like, it's me. <laughs> I hope I'm uh, as good as you think I am. <laughs> it needed that sound effect, too. That perfect touch. Yeah, there you go. I was wondering when that bell was. Always by my side. Yeah. Right next to the sunglasses. <laughs> You can make anything work online. It really is about, you know, place, time, and motivation. I think motivation coming in last sounds a little bit, you know, cynical, but it is true. I've seen one too many times of somebody doing something really well, and somebody comes in like five months, a year later, does the same thing in half the quality, and people are like, oh my God, I love it, I love it, I love it. To where the guy who originally was doing the thing is just kind of <laughs> let them the dust. It's like, well, that doesn't seem fair, does it? It's like, well, no, it doesn't. But that's entertainment, and that's the internet. It moves very quickly. And yeah, you can fire off too soon or too late. But sometimes I think too soon is probably the worst thing. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But like somebody setting a trend and then you maybe altering and perfecting the trend seems to be like the, if you're aiming to make something work the best angle. I mean, throwing away, throwing away all like thoughts of, do I enjoy this? Is this fun? No, like forget about emotion. Just like raw numbers, which is what every analytics person wants to hear. It's like, <laughs> no emotion, sign me up. I just... Yeah, it, it's, good to, it's good to look into what people can and can't do as as well as with what they want to do. Um, I guess that's why I didn't get burnt out in the countdowns. I always found some reward into it. Like, if, they get, if I got a particularly bad script and I know I got one of the worst ones... I'd be, I'd be like, not upset at anybody, I'd be like, damn this script. I'd focus it on the script and be like, you know what? Take him one for the team. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and i in there like, let's go. Let's make it good. Let's elevate the material. And that always felt nice. Like I can usually find a decent reason if it's not moral than just egotistical self-serving to do the thing, to do the act. That's acting. I feel actors got it a little bit easier at the end of the day. Because, you know, writers are, are behind the scenes. Actors are up front. So if yeah, you read a script, what, yeah. You're the people who make it interesting and palatable and on topic and within the interest of the mainstream. I can't do that. I, I am not that, but that's what makes it a good mix. You wouldn't hear somebody like me talking about this kind of stuff because I'm in my own little world to where you have a more broad understanding of things 
which makes for a good combination to where we don't really have to work together because even though we're like oil and water, it's an interesting combination of it. It works. Mm -hmm. It's a good contrast. It's like, see, I like that. It's really like when you, I do too. I mean, it's like when you're like an SPD, when you're paired usually in the videos that you're paired with Melissa on. I mean, you're two entirely different characters, but when you two go at it, yeah, and yes, it's scripted, but when you go at it, it's, it really is interesting. It makes a video great, I think. It makes oh, it I work. love it. Yeah. Any m moment they just give me a chance to go, No, Melissa! No! <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I was very active in, in encouraging them. Yeah, like, have Melissa commit acts of violence against the Hellbent character. It'll be great. <laughs> and she beats your ass at the end. <laughs> yeah, I pushed for that, and I'm glad I did. I, I find that to be fun you get you get to see melissa beat the fuck out of somebody asserting her dominance as the planet dolan character the highest power level and that was your idea that she would beat you up at the end of that one video that was your idea i don't know if it was entirely my idea but i do know that i was very very positive in pushing for it <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Ha, ha, please have Hellbent be as mean as possible to Melissa and then have him have Melissa beat him up and I thought it was really fun because I knew I know some of the audience are younger and they'll take it <laughs> well they won't take it seriously but they've used the cartoon characters as the cartoon characters mm -hmm. as I think most actors would prefer so when they talk about the Hellbent character the Melissa character the Dolan character or anything like that as the character I find it to be a lot more fun because it, that means we're all basically playing make-believe at this point but it's effective it makes sense it's a good time is there anything that you'd want to see in a future spd script like involving your character uh, you know what i like it when i can't see it coming but as far as that goes uh just more just the further increase of him being villainous like whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> you can do to make him more and more um, maybe not obnoxious to the audience, but obnoxious to the, whoever I'm working with. I find those kind of uh, a big dichotomy between the characters is nice to see. It's also nice to see two characters that mix together well, like when you got uh, like Melissa and Pringle or something like that, to where it's two very, you know, positive speaking people, uh, confident in what they say, working together. That's nice. But then you get two people that can, uh, or, you know, Dolan and I, to where Dolan's a sarcastic person and <laughs> I am as well. <laughs> Like, it's all right. It, it's that works really good. But I find having like Dolan and I just pe just pestering Melissa is my favorite thing. Can just have all the can we just write even Pringle to be mean to Melissa for no reason? Can we do that? Can we make Pringle do that? I don't know if we can. I don't know if he'll do it. Audience wouldn't see it coming. <laughs> Pringle's like, man, fuck you, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I think, I, think, I think Pringle's version of that is to just be oblivious about things. And so he causes accidents by being kind of a dingus. That's his version. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a, it's like the misinterpretation they have of the Dolan character. Pringle kind of plays the happy-go-lucky fool to where Dolan's more of the sarcastic, knows what he's doing kind of character. I think people confuse it too. That's why I like to be typecasted as just the utter unabashed asshole. That works really good. Could and you then you can mix that with Nixiom. Nixiom's got a lot of the sim a lot of similar characteristics for his character, so it's a good clash of two people. You know, you put two people that are identical next to each other, of course they're going to fight, but if they're assholes, they're really going to fight. Like, you know, the vain elf wielding a sword or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it is like battle of the egos, right? <laughs> Between people that e you're okay with seeing both of them be harmed. <laughs> it's like, eh, whoever gets hurt, I'll enjoy it. Or you, even like, if it was possible, you and me doing an SPD script. That, that contrast right there between our characters. That would be great, because I could just call you a, a fucking nerd and just, you know, rail on you. Or, <laughs> would... or a fat ass. I mean, look at my character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice writing, tons of fun. Where'd you plagiarize that from? Dylan, take this down. I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> joke, you joke, joke. You can't record this for bullying. It's on your own channel. <laughs> or can you? I don't know. We'll see where the rules are soon enough. Yeah, people are like, you're not fat, Derek, you're fluffy. Dude, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's a character, whatever. It's a fictional character. Yeah, we have had problems in the past of people differentiating the characters from the cartoon. And I, I do remember at one point voicing a concern about it. It's like, maybe we should let people know a little bit more thoroughly. But then after seeing the, that, and understanding rather, like I don't watch the credits for every movie that I look at, mm -hmm. you know. Like, Tom Cruise is just Tom Cruise to me. I forget the name of the character. <laughs> the 
so eh, I, I view it as just a, a bridging point and if somebody actually thinks you're a living cartoon character you should probably not communicate with them eh, i learned that not. too like i'm sure there are a lot of people who think that you're an actual demon oh there's people <laughs> who think i look like the character no kidding well Boy, so, they, that's not surprising uh, I don't run into people that have that frame that have my voice, but you know what? I get why it's appealing. Then there's my anything, voice. It's, it's flattering that it's, uh, it sells. Your voice is interesting because your character is uh, large and has a very intimidating look to him, right? But then you hear the voice and it's just a sweet, nice dude. Yeah, I love hey, that. Guys. I love that dynamic right there. I love that total dichotomy between my voice and my character. I love that. I prattle on about dichotomies, but the thing is, I really like them because it's a it's a really quick surprise. Yeah. And it usually works. Easy to understand. And it's like, okay, so I, I, I get the logic of this now. And that's fun. And it can lead to unique interactions. Like you can have a character who's weak-willed but has like a tremendous amount of strength. And you can play with that in a way that you couldn't play with the character who has a tremendous amount of strength and is a complete psychotic asshole. Like that character is one-dimensional and boring, but the character who's tremendous but meek, they have layers. You can explore that a lot more. That being said, I prefer to play the stupid monster. <laughs> it's just you get more chances to scream and be a dick to other actors without it actually like reflecting on you poorly and everybody applauds you for it. Yeah. It's the only time I've ever been paid to be an asshole to like granted it's fiction and you know, yeah, it's yeah. All in the script. Good job. I really believe that you hated that person. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Dolan, seriously, no pressure or anything, but I mean, I think it'd be cool with of you know, Hellbent and I doing a SPD. I don't know how you feel about that, but just an idea. It's mostly uh, Mooclock that chooses the people now. Oh, uh, he so does, okay. He usually takes the initiative of uh, doing doing some of the script, and then I'll come in and, and, and edit a whole bunch of stuff myself. Uh, but sometimes if I have a really good idea, then I will pick the people myself and then write it from scratch. You know uh, what, Derek? I'll, I'll tell you what. I like doing freebies enough. You write something that impresses Dolan. And we'll act it before you even send it to him. We'll just do it without any any uh, other. Dolan, stop listening. This is between Derek and I. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna surprise Dolan with something, and if he hates it, we're gonna take it like men and not cry. Okay. Okay, I'll try not to cry. Okay. I'm, gonna cry like I'm last kidding, time. dude. <laughs> I know I'll cry too. Anyways, you can listen again, Dolan. It's cool. Well, that'll be it for this episode. Join me for the next episode where I'll be talking to more of the voice actors from Planet Dolan. That or some of the illustrators from the channel. Either way, see you in the next episode. But until then, keep writing.